Alabama 42, <laughs> Arkansas 35. Arkansas's post-game Dude. win expectancy here was 60%. And Dude. <laughs> I texted you yesterday and said, this Alabama team is awful. They are garbage. <laughs> and, and I know that they're not. I am overreacting in the worst kind of way. But the fake field goal for a touchdown was a lot of fun. I don't know if you went back and watched that one. Yeah, that was, dude, that was, that was, I, it is, how can you not love Sam Pittman and oh, what they're awesome. doing at Arkansas right now? That's, they oh are my so gosh, much fun. that's so fun. I, I think between this game and a couple others we were tracking, there's like scientists can pinpoint the exact moment when you and I both decided, hey, we're going to open an afternoon beer yesterday. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> there, and there were multiple opened uh, because I was just, I was up against yeah. it early, early on. It was it was kind of rough. Total yardage in this Arkansas four four hundred sixty eight total yards. Alabama six seventy one. So Alabama had eight point eight yards per play, six point four yards per play for Arkansas. Uh, both ran you know mid seventies plays in the game. Uh, Arkansas went for it on fourth down three times. They got all three of them. One of those obviously was that fake field goal. Uh, third downs, Alabama 6 of 11, Arkansas 7 of 16. Nobody could stop anybody in this game. It was it was bananas, and and nobody really ran the ball. Alabama had 112 yards. It was 145 sack-adjusted rushing yards. But Arkansas ran for 110, uh, 133 sack-adjusted. This was very interesting. Like, Alabama has basically two healthy running backs left. That they they have had multiple guys go down with seasoning uh, ending injuries, and this is Brian Robinson's team. Twenty seven for one twenty two. Uh, Trey Sanders ran it one time, you know, in there, and they are probably going to get him some more work against Auburn next week. But uh, Traylon Smith, I kind of expected some more from in this game. They only ran him nine times, but I, I think he's been dealing with some injuries. Uh, Traylon Burks had eight receptions, one hundred seventy nine yards. This is this was a fun fun ball game. Like every time Alabama would get up, they were up thirty-one to fourteen early in the third quarter, and Arkansas found a way to come back and just they got they got dudes on that team, like they got some studs there. What uh, what do you think man. about this one? They they really do have athletes, and again, they're just um. I, I mean, I just love. I I think I'm trying to find the exact point. It was I, I know that many teams would quit at the half. Alabama comes out with a drive, thirty-one to thirty-one to fourteen. Yeah, so many teams quit there. And Arkansas scored three more touchdowns and and had the ball, I mean, and, and scored a touchdown with four minutes left. Like, they, I mean, they did not give up at all, which I think that maybe Alabama a little bit has in the past expected that of people. It's like, hey, man, we're going to go two shots to the face, and then you're just going to lay down, and we're going to ride this out. We'll both make our money and go home. And SEC West teams, I mean, look at how feisty these are. Like Jimbo, son of a gun, doesn't want to quit. Lane, son of a gun, will not quit. Sam Pittman will outwork you until he dies. Like some of these SEC West guys are just not taking this. Hey, that's right, we lose it. You know, we we lose. Like look at, I mean, look at um, Mike uh, Mike Leach against Auburn two weeks ago or whatever that was. Yes. Where Auburn was up twenty to three or something. And the SEC West in the past just used to say, you're right, the big boy punched me, I'll let the bully take my lunch money, and then I'll sit back and and try and get some other wins. And a lot of these guys are saying, no, dude, we don't have to take that. Uh, And that that was super impressive. Uh, What's crazy to me, KJ Jefferson pressured on 30, almost 33% of dropbacks, like one in three there, pressured a ton, but he was able to get away from it. They only sacked him twice on 11 of those, and he completed, you know, 56% of his passes. He was able to make something out of nothing there. And, and, and scramble pretty and, and and scrambling wasn't part of his rushing attack. Like he was either yeah. getting away from it, throwing an incompletion, or he was he was getting getting, you know, the check down yards there too. So I think that was pretty frustrating for Alabama's defense as well. No, he he was incredibly accurate. Like twenty two out of thirty, three twenty six and three touchdowns. I mean, that's a that's a QBR damn near two hundred. Like he is yeah. unbelievable. And the battle between those two guys, like he one, he's massive. Right, I mean, he looks like a Cam Newton type as far as his size, and you watch him compared to Bryce Young, and Bryce Young is this little, little tiny dude that's like running around in the pocket, like scampering around. It, it's really, it's a stark contrast. I, I enjoyed this. I will tell you, as an Alabama fan, there are not a lot of opportunities to have like close, you know, grab your guts games, you know, and this was one of them. Alabama turned the football over. With eight minutes left, roundabout in the ball game, turned it over on the one yard line. Cameron Latu caught a pass, was running into the end zone, 
are trying to run into the end zone, gets the ball stripped, Arkansas recovers. So they actually had a shot. They had possession with a chance to take the lead. And luckily, the Alabama defense got a stop. Uh, I mean, they, they get some stops here and there. Uh, the, the defense isn't awful, but there are, there are games like this where, okay, three out of three on fourth down, seven to 16 on third down. Uh, they threw for 358. It's like, okay, can we ever put this thing away? Right, and it just doesn't happen yeah. for whatever reason. So it it was rather frustrating as an Alabama fan to watch. Yeah, but I mean, at the end of the day, you get a win, and it's a nice, close, everybody's watching kind of game, which is what it turned into. Like I, I don't think that a lot of people were planning to watch this, but uh, but it lets me know. Like anytime you've got Alabama as a massive, massive favorite, at I, I mean, it's not just an automatic that you got to take them, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, it used to be Alabama plus whatever was the bet always. And, and, and this year, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of been crazy. One, one weird little stat thing I noticed about Bryce Young this year and what they're having to do on offense. Bryce Young uh, has passed, has had 40, 40 dropbacks. One, uh, let me make sure I get my math right. One, two, three, four, five times. And in four of their last five conference games, he's had 40 or more passing dropbacks. Mac Jones only passed for 40, only, only 40 dropbacks twice, both in postseason, Florida in the championship game, and then Ohio State in the championship. Two in his uh, 2019 season, only passed 40 times uh, twice. So like Alabama is having to throw the ball way, way more with Bryce Young uh, because I think that their rushing attack hasn't been as dominant. And, you know, who knows what's going on in Bill O'Brien's head. But to me, it's just with, with, with the teams not quitting and with Alabama kind of stylistically looking at different, it does feel like we're in one of those transition periods for the age of college football. That's not to say oh, yeah. Alabama's phasing out. They're obviously still excellent, even if they're flawed. But, but I mean, it just does feel you're like, man, things are – we're going to look back in a couple of years and be like, yeah, Alabama started passing a ton. That's that's the thing that happened, yeah. Which is it, – it's, it's kind of nuts because we did have this around the time of the A&M game that everybody was discussing, hey, you need to run the damn ball more. And the issue is that, yeah, if you've only got two healthy backs, and even when they did have Roy Dale Williams and Jason McClellan and whatnot, that was still a little bit of an issue, right? You you still don't have that premier back that is really – these guys are all young. Like, I will tell you this, this team is going to be really good, I think, next season because it, basically everybody's coming back. Uh, Bryce Young, only a sophomore, like he's got a lot of learning to do. The offensive line, still growing up, still trying to figure things out. I mean, they were without... Uh, they had their center back yesterday, and I forget his name. I should know it. But it, he's still dealing with, uh, you know, a little bit of an injury, the ankle injury and whatnot. And there's it, the continuity and everything that they had in 2020 will never be replicated. The Bill O'Brien thing. Yeah, in, in the NFL, it's not as easy to get two yards on third and two. So a lot of teams, if you do have a, a superstar quarterback, you throw the football. It makes sense. <laughs> Ryan McCracken jumped in on, on YouTube. I think I could get 10 catches versus Bama. I mean, probably. <laughs> okay, here's – I'm, I'm not going to read this word for word, but my tweet yesterday was like – I'm trying to remember what game it was where I saw somebody catch something over the middle and just get obliterated. And I thought – I tweeted and thought, every time I see that happen to a wide receiver, I remember how quickly I would die in a college football <laughs> game. Like, there was no getting by in a college football game. I couldn't just, like, hide out and not get murdered. I would die. Immediately, yes. some of these dudes take a shoulder to the ribs and still hold on to the ball. Not me. Couldn't do it. No. Would not. Impossible. Impossible. All right, um, let's let's move on. Oh, I don't want to talk about Alabama forever, but I don't have any place else to get these thoughts out. <laughs> I wonder if next year there's not going to be an overcorrection because like this year in the passing game, it's like Bryce Young, dance around and then make something happen. Yes. Next year, if their offensive line's a little better, is there going to be like an adjustment period for Bryce Young to learn to stay in the pocket and make his reads? Because I think a little bit we're seeing that at Oklahoma with Rattler this year. Last year, Rattler was like playing chaos ball, and it was ebb and flow. We're like, all right, this might go well. Yeah. This year, he's had time, and he got benched because he just can't make his stinking reads. Yeah, that's, I, I do wonder. I mean, it depends on if Bill O'Brien is still there next year, right? I think that's a big part of it because I think that Bill O'Brien runs it very much like an NFL offense, and Saban would much rather – I mean, they remember, he did this the last NFL guy that he – if you want to count Sarkeesian as NFL, so the guy before him, Brian Dable, uh, Saban kind of ran him out after one season. Yeah, they won a national title, but he didn't like the way that Dable called the offense. He just he, he did not like the way that he was handling the Jalen situation, and then, of course, Tua comes in, wins the national title, and all this kind of stuff. But 
he immediately caught the next train out of town and took the Buffalo Bills offense coordinator job. You know, and then you you come in with guys that you know. Like, this is all of this that Alabama's running is a variation of Lane Kiffin's offense. It's it, He brought this yeah. offense in, and Saban took it and molded it and adjusted it, and it's it's all Kiffin, it, his tempo offense. There's just different wrinkles to it. So it's, I mean, there's nothing crazy, but it, it's it's whoever's calling the plays. And if it's still O'Brien next year, I don't know that you'll see a lot of that, but you could certainly see it if they were to bring in somebody else. So uh, Ball yeah. Python Love jumped in and said, Rat, uh, Rattler isn't good at all. <laughs> you, you're not wrong. The word I've heard about Rattler is that he watches his own highlights. That's oh, all I'll God, say about God. <laughs> That's a, the, the, the videos of him from when he was in high school are so you can't put a kid in that, you can't put a kid in that much of a spotlight and expect him not to yeah I know. man gosh I know but God, oh, I man. saw it and was like a man all right let's uh, let's move okay, off of that get, one. get me off Alabama because otherwise I'm gonna start talking about all the drama with Kirby Smart taking pictures of the defensive board but uh, <laughs> Nick Saban was photocopying Lane Kiffin's playbook so there you ooh. go that's the way it goes <laughs> hey uh, you you come in and, and you're working in a spot that's the way it's gonna be. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.